Good morning. How are everybody doing today? I'm doing good. But how is everybody doing today? That's what I like to hear, Candace. I'm glad to be back in Camden. It's like a second home to me. Amen? Amen. Every time Brother Kenneth went on vacation, you know, Brother Kenneth always on a vacation. And I come and I fill in for him and I became like a little home to me. The sisters and the brothers are so loving here. So it's a pleasure to come and preach the word in front of y'all today. And whenever I'm called to proclaim the gospel, those things that Brother Ken said about me, he's very accurate. Uh... I grew up in the city of Chester. Anybody familiar with Chester? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many in here from Camden? All of y'all from Camden, then y'all know what Chester like, right? That used to be me. I used to be a bad kid on the block and uh, did some things in my life that I ain't proud of, but I'm proud to share it with people. Amen. You know why I'm, I'm proud to share it? Because it shows you how good God is. Amen? Yes, sir. I had my own plans, but God stopped me and said, Nah, I, I got another plan for you. Yes, sir. Come on now. And he sat me down. I was a wild donkey. Uh -huh. My mama couldn't stop me. Uh -huh. My daddy couldn't stop me. Next day I know Jesus stopped me. Amen? Come on. Come on, sir. He stopped me in my footsteps, and I was like, Now where I go from here, Lord? He said, Just follow my word. Amen? Amen. So I like to share my little background with people. I like to share because uh, I got five, five sons. And you know how boys is when you're raising them. And, and, and they, go stray, they go stray away from what the parents say. That was me. So I try to share my story with them let them know that ain't the way to go. So a lot of people don't make it back from that. But I was blessed to be able now to be assistant minister at this Church of, Church of Christ. We're um, doing well down there. God been good to us, and we're looking for a, a blessed year this year. And um, we're going to do a lot of work with Camden this year also, so we're in the making of that. So let's keep that work in, in, in prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What time y'all service to be over here, Brother Kenneth? When we done. When we done, huh? Yes, sir. When you be done? Y'all don't run from the word of God here, do y'all? No, sir. Because uh, I'm a preacher. Come on, and I'm going to preach that word, Amen. So today we're going to talk about when change become confusion. Uh -huh. When change become confusion. Because I was sitting back listening to the encouraging prayer request this morning. And, and, and I want to encourage the members that still forth and ask for prayer. It takes a lot of courage to, to, to ask for prayer during prayer requests. And, 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 and y'all encouraged me to say what I needed to say. And, and, and I want y'all to never ashamed, be ashamed to ask God for help. Because man going to let you down. You let yourself down. But God makes sure that he sees you through. Amen? Amen? So I want to encourage whatever you're going through, like the brother expressed for us earlier, let, let God, give it to God. Let God take care of you. God never, never fails us. He, he's still in control, and he still is powerful. Amen? Amen? So when change become confusion, I want to convince the brethren today of the necessity of being faithful to the Lord. Being faithful is what God asked. He didn't say, brother and sister, to be perfect. He said this remains faithful until death. So all we got to do is remain faithful to God. So I want to help encourage Camden here today, our friends, our family, our visitors, to be encouraged to remain faithful to the Lord. But sometimes change happens and it can cause confusion. I'm going to remind you, you are a member of the Lord's church. Amen? Amen? The church that Jesus built. The church that Jesus built is perfect. There's no flaws. There's no fallen bricks. There's no broken windows. It's a perfect church. Amen? It don't need me or you to do anything to change that. On, so when we start to change... It start to, things start to get confused. We start getting confused about what is going on. But I want to share with you today, the first Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. Can I hear some pages turning, brother and sister? Can I see phones in your hand? We got phones that, that got Bibles. We got, we got paperback Bibles. I want to see Bibles. I like to hear pages turning. That's an encouragement. They said we should search the scripture to make sure what we are studying is so, right? And that's what's the beauty about the Church of Christ. We got Bibles. Amen? Amen. We got Bibles. Some people come visit the Church of Christ and say, wow, they got Bibles. 
because other churches, other denominations, don't encourage you to open your Bible because they're not telling you what God is saying. It is telling you what the Lord is not saying and what man is saying, and it causes confusion. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse thirty-three. And I'm a fast speaker. I come from a family that talk fast, so you might say, "Brother Isaac, slow down." Amen. You might not understand what I'm saying, so I say, "Brother Isaac, slow down." It say, "For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace, as all in all the churches of the saints." So God is saying His church should not be confused. It should not be no confusion among the saints. He encouraged us to open our word and not adapt to the world when it changes. The church should remain the same. Amen? Today, in the world we live in today, we see television commercials and it asserts that the world will change. Some people start to panic. What's going to happen? What we're going to do when the world changes? We have experienced change in all our lives. For me personally, a change, a personal change is when I look at my high school yearbook. So I was the man. And now I look at myself and say, look at you. Where did you go? Right? So a change has happened in my life. Change has happened in my life. So and sometimes we be confused, like, Isaac, what happened? You was a you was a stud football player. You was you was ranked in the country. You was you you had the body of the year and all those things. Now you look back and now I'm confused. Like where did I go? Some people say when you get married you put on weight. They say that means you're happy. Yes sir. Yes, and, and and I'm cool with that. Yes sir. I'm cool. I'm cool with that. So change sometimes can cause confusion. Change in transportation. From the horse and buggy to the supersonic jet. Mm -hmm. Changes, it was change, change in communication from the telegraph to the computer. Change. Other people can relate to that. Some of us still don't know how to use a computer. So that change made them confused. How you know? Mom, answer that text message. Girl, I don't know nothing about this phone. Girl, just give me a flip phone, I'm okay. Now they got. Handheld computers. And you ever see the confusion in your parents' faces when they confuse? They confuse. And now, as I, I just turned 29 the other day, thank God that he blessed me to see another birthday, another year. And now I start to see my sons is saying things that I'm like, what do that mean? Now I'm confused. And I thought I was going to change with time. But we got people today that expect the Lord's church to change with time. God said, I'm not the author of confusion. My son built my church, and my church has its laws and rules and regulations where you should follow. Who are you to change my church? That's just the introduction, brother and sister. It's a change in medicine. Medicine change all the time. You get your blood pressure medicine. You see, this is not the same blood pressure medicine that I had last month. It's a different name. Different type of um, insulin now. Different asthma pumps. You're like, this is not the same. So now it's, you confuse. So we see how change could cause confusion in our lives. Amen? It could also cause confusion in the church. And that's the base of this, uh, this lesson here today. In religion, we sing about... Hold it to God's unchanging hand. Amen? Amen? Just got finished singing that. So God is telling us my hand will not change even when we change ours. Amen? Amen. His word will not change. God said my word was established, my law was established, and it will not change to, to form to the world. Y'all missed that. God said my word would not change to conform to the world. He want the world to conform to his word. He don't want the church to change. He want us to change. Amen? And sometimes we come out the Baptist background. We come out the Pentecostal background. We come out of the Catholic background. And sometimes when we come into the church of Christ, we see things that's different. 
no music, nobody doing sprints up and down the aisle. We see change. And sometimes the new Christian could be confused and say, I don't think I want to go there. Or I don't think I need to worship with them. Those people is different. But they failed to realize that we are God, chosen people, his own possession, that he brought it to us through Christ. And they expect us to change for them. But God said, no. They need a change to be like Christ. Amen? We need to be like Christ. Sometimes when it's confusion, people panic. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't. So they rely on their own knowledge, their own righteousness. They like to go to the preacher and the elders and, and say, listen, we need to upgrade the way we worship. We need to have two separate worship services. We need one for the younger generation. We need one for the older generation. And we need one for the kids. But God said, I am not the author of confusion, but the author of peace. So we should not be moved from what God is showing us. We should not be moved to compromise the gospel for the world. Amen? We are set aside, brothers and sisters. God set us aside his own possession, his people, his children. And he said, do not be conformed of this world, but be what? Transformed. Amen? We need to be transformed instead of trying to change the church. God didn't ask for that. We need to hold fast to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15. Turn with me there, please. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15. And it say, so then, brethren, stand firm. This is the Apostle Paul telling the Thessalonians. Stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught, whether by word of mouth or by letter from us. He has re reminded them that the Lord's church will stay the same. That we need to stand firm on the traditions of the word of God. Not bring your traditions and change God's traditions, but we need to change our traditions into God's traditions. Amen? Amen. Amen? We're not here to please ourselves or the person next to us. We're here to worship the one true God, the living God that will give us all the spiritual blessings that's in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? So we need to stand firm, brothers and sisters, not to, not to compromise the word of God. Not just a little bit. And there are some today, they call, they, 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 some are called for change today. They identify themselves as change agents. You ever heard of them? Change agents. They like to go around. Their motive is church growth. Church growth. For example, Chester is a small congregation. We're, 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 nice. we're, we're small compared to a lot of congregations. And, and, and so it's, people think since you're small, you're vulnerable. <laughs> when you're small, they think you're vulnerable. So they think they can come on in and, and, and change God's word. Amen. But, but, but I got a preacher that, that's a brick wall. He's been there for over 30 some years. Brother Will Drew, he's a brick wall. So when they come in and, 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 and they run into him, they run back out. Because he would not be removed from the word of God. So we call them change agents. They're more than the church growth. So they come in with all these bright ideas. Oh, you should do this and do that. You should change this and change that. Hold up. How do you expect to change what God's built? How do you expect to change what God's built? But, but be honest, some people do it out of ignorance. Don't, don't, don't understand the word of God. They think is they're not harming anything. Yeah, they're good ideas. They're bright ideas. But they're not biblical ideas. Amen? Amen. When we take away from the word of God and make his word void, now we're in error. Now we're adding to it and we're taking away. And that's dangerous. Amen? Amen. 
So we got people that motives is to come and change the church. And I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about the body of Christ. You can put the, all the decorations you want up. You can put curtains up your color, whatever you want to do to the building. But what you are preaching, we cannot change. Amen? Their motive is meeting the challenges of the changing world. Meeting the challenges of the changing world. They like to change with time change. Oh, we need to think outside the box. The scriptures is outdated. The Bible is not relevant anymore. These are the changes that people are trying to do to the Lord's church. They come in and say, y'all need to get up to date. And you know what I tell them? The same sin that was in Jesus' time is the same sin today. So that means we need the same remedy to get rid of sins. Amen? And that's through Jesus Christ. And we need to stand firm, as Paul told the, the Thessalonian church, to stand firm on the tradition, to hold to the tradition which you were taught, whether by the word of mouth or by the letter from us. Paul is stretching the urgency of to stay firm. Camden, stay firm. I know y'all going to stay firm. Y'all got a good preacher here. He young. He got energy. He, he doing a very good job. Amen? amen. So y'all got to work with this preacher. Amen? amen. The most amen I heard all day. Good brother. Amen. amen. So we got to stand firm on the principles of God. Amen. We got to continue to walk according to the scriptures and not on our own. Because when you change the scriptures, you change the church. When you change the church, you separate yourself from Christ. When you separate yourself from Christ, you no longer fellowship with God. Amen? You no longer fellowship with the Father. You can say you love God, but how can you love someone you do not know? So change could call confusion. Coming out the denomination could call confusion. I'm not used to not seeing instruments. People drumming up and down. So you know what they say? Oh, y'all need to change this. Y'all need to add an organ here, a drum set there. But they don't understand that's error. Now, confusion is set in. You got these members over here that say, you know what, we're not even going to go there no more because they got instruments and amen to that. Then you got these members over here. Oh, instruments just don't mean anything. It's okay. As long as we still praise the one God. No, God said, follow my law and my law is thy law. Don't go to the left or don't go to the right. Stay on that straight and narrow. Amen? We can't change the Lord's church. Man cannot change it. Doesn't matter what, how, how many degrees you got and how much you think you could dissect this Bible. You cannot change the church. Amen? Amen. That's beautiful. Because if man changed the church, who's going to be saved? You left your salvation in man's hands. Can't count on your preacher. He's got to open that Bible. And if he preaching in error... You need to pull it to the side and say, brother, ah, that don't line up with scripture. Amen? Amen. Amen. Or if you're confused on what he's teaching, pull it to the side and say, brother, I don't understand. Can you break that down to me? Yes, sir. Don't just let it go over you. Don't, don't, don't just deal with it. Don't compromise with it. Come on, you got to test the spirit. Amen? Amen. Because Jesus said they're going to be among us. We got to watch out for them. The challenge of a new world. Change may become confusing. Turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 8. Y'all read the Old Testament in here? Yes, sir. I know some churches that just read the New Testament. Yeah. And, and I think they're robbing themselves when you just read the New Testament. Because you can't understand the New Testament without understanding the Old Testament. Amen? You, they go together. They are, they're, they're one book. Yes, sir. They're one God. So when you read the Old Testament, it's going to open up your mind to how God expects you to walk. And you can learn, yes, sir. not for your parents' mistakes, but Israel's mistakes. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. Whew, those people was hard back in those times, yes, bro. Was, how, I wish God would take us by the hand today, baby. I'd rather take that than faith anytime. Amen? Amen. Yes, you tell, when you read the Old Testament, right, I want, when you read it, read it to understand it. Don't just read through it and say, I read, I read a book today. Read it to understand it and, and see how God really took Israel by the hand. 
he, when, when he told them not to do this and not to do that, he broke down every little piece. So nobody could say, well, God, you ain't say this or you ain't say that, right? He took them by the hand. First Samuel chapter 8, verse 1 through 7. It say, now after this, after this, it came about that David defeated the Palestines. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong one. First Samuel, I'm sorry. Chapter 8. It said, it came about when Samuel was old that he appointed his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of the firstborn was Joel, and the name of the second was Abijah, and they were judging to the Bathshebas. His son, however, did not walk, listen to this, he, they did not walk in his ways. Remember who Samuel was, right? Samuel was a prophet of God. What did a prophet do for God? They're, they're the mediators, right? God tell them what to tell the people. So this is what Samuel's sons, when, when you see that they did not walk in Samuel's ways, we should refer to God's ways, amen? Because God put the words in Samuel's mouth to tell his sons to be appointed judges. So he say to them, they did not walk in, my, in, in his ways, but turned aside at the dishonest gains and took bribes and perverted justice. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. And they said to him, Behold, you have grown old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appointed a king for us to judge us like all the nations. Verse 6, but, the, but this thing we displeasing in the sight of Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, listen to the voice of the people in regards of all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. What's wrong with this problem? Look at modern churches today. Look at the church of Christ today. We can learn a lesson from here. God appointed judges to watch over Bathsheba. Samuel was a prophet of God. God said, you know, give me your two sons. Make them judge. Guess what these fools do? They start taking bribes. They start uh, perverting judgment. They was greedy. All the above, right? So guess what the people said? The people thought the present system had, has failed. The people thought what God put in order has failed. God said, no, Samuel, they didn't reject you. They rejected me. So the people said, give us a king to judge us. Because these boys over here, they're taking bribes, they're greedy, they're not giving a fair trial. They, your ways have failed, God. Your system has failed, God. But God said, no, my system did not fail. The people failed. Amen? Amen. The people failed. God is always right. Yes, sir. God will always be right. Mm -hmm. God is always in control. Yes, sir. It will always be in control. Amen? So when, when, when they said God's system has failed and they walked away from God, guess what God said to them? Samuel, go ahead, tell them, li listen to them, give them what they want. Now they don't have a God as their king, amen? God's system do not fail, brothers and sisters. That means the church today should not change because the world want what they want. The church should not change because members want what they want. Members can't change the church that Jesus built. It's perfect. It don't need no adding. We don't need to take away. We can't make it any better than what it already is. Because God built it. Jesus died for it. His blood was shed. That's perfect. Amen? Amen. So the people thought the present system has failed. The sons of Samuel and Job, Job was greedy. They took bribes. They perverted judgment and, and was taken over. Did, they, did the failure mean God's ways have failed? No. God put in, in, in effect the best thing that they needed. They needed judges. And we still got judges to this day, right? This, the, the, the system is good. It's the people that's in the system. Amen? It's the people that got these the office, the names, the titles that, 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 that go off their feelings and because you're black and you're white and in and, and, and Spanish that, that I need to judge you a certain way. No. Because your personal feelings 
in, 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 your, in your elected seat, you want to change things because you got power. People get power and they think they can change things and that they, that God can't tell them nothing. Can't tell them nothing. And it was like what Brother Ken was talking about today in Acts chapter 10 and 11. No partiality. God don't show no favoritism. God don't care who you are. We don't want to be like the Jews. You see what happened in Acts chapter, chapter 11 verse 1 and 2 when, when they said, hold up. Peter, you was over there with those Gentiles, those unclean people. Mm-hmm. They was talking bad about the Gentiles. And, and Peter said to them, oh, God said nothing. He made us unclean. They was cast with judgment. They was confused because change was happening. They was confused. The Jews, oh, no, they Gentile. We can't hang with them. We can't do nothing with them. They're unclean to us. So when the change had come, when Peter talked on the gospel and they became, and they came into the fold, the Jews was like, no, they was confused. Then they was like, oh, okay, I see now. After Peter had explained to him his dream, what, what happened there. And then they was fine with change. But what did they do? It resorted back to the word of God. Peter said, what I had spoke to them, it would made the change. Amen? So we always got to resort back to the word of God. So did the failure mean God ways have failed? No. The people wanted to be like others. Can the church be like others? No. We can't be like others. And then if we become like others, how can somebody tell us different? How they know you are a Christian? If, you, if Isaac, myself, was still slinging rocks in Chester, still toting guns, doing all the bad things that I've done in my life, and then on Sunday morning, I'm in church on Sunday morning talking about hallelujah. Uh, hear, hear me out. And I'm saying hallelujah. Right. How can somebody say, oh, I know he's a Christian. Well, well so I had to change my ways. Yes, Even though change was hard for me, yes, sir. I didn't understand. I was confused. What did God want from me? So my image had to change. I had to change. People had to see what a Christian is. So if the church change, how can people say this church is different from that church? Or this church is different from that church? They all do the same thing. God said, nah, I'm not the author of confusion. My people need to be set aside. My people need to have their own identity. My people need to worship differently. My people need to do what I say so they can have salvation. Amen? Amen. So what we practice determine where we spend eternity. Mm-hmm. If the church in error, and you there every Sunday praying and worshiping with that error, you're in error. God said, I'm not the author of confusion. That is Satan putting that seed in your mind and in your heart to say, you know what? God understands. I can live in this fornication relationship because God understands. As long as I go to church on Sunday, it's okay. I can have all these wives and, and, and God know my heart is right. It's okay. I could be, be a busybody in the church, but it's okay because God know I didn't mean it. I was just expressing my feelings and things like this. God said that's not how my people operate. Amen? Amen. My people need to operate according to my word. Amen. God said you need your own identity as the body of Christ. Jesus said, God said, I give them a new name. Amen? Amen. And that new name is Christian. Your new name is Christian. You are a Christian. You're not no Christian Baptist. Not no Christian Methodist. You're not no Catholic. Jesus said, you're just a Christian. Amen? Amen. So when somebody said, what what are your background, your religious background? I'm just a Christian. You know what they're going to say to you? What kind of Christian? I like that question. How about we sit down and talk about that question? Amen? You don't understand that question will lead to a soul being saved. The little thing where you think it's not going to work, it works for God. Just by telling somebody you're just a Christian will open up conversation. And the conversation leads to the water. Amen? If you keep your mouth shut, you can't, you can't, you can't save nobody. 
What our job is to bring souls to Jesus. Yes, to bring souls to Jesus. Yes, that is our job, to bring souls to Jesus. Every day of our life, we should pray, God, please bless me with an opportunity yes, to lead somebody to Jesus. Amen? Yes, sir. That is our job. Yes, sir. Christianity don't have a switch. Uh-huh. Once you get down into that water, and Jesus adds you to his beautiful church that need no changing, that you can't help fix. Amen? When you go down into that water and you raise up, you become a Christian. And it's time to go to work. Yes, sir. Time to go to work. Yes, sir. If we don't tell them how to be saved, then how can they be saved, brothers and sisters? Mm-hmm. These other pastors and preachers and elders that's out here you see on TV, I find that entertaining too, the ones that's on TV. They, 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 and, they, and they fall right for them. They fall right for them. They, they, Satan just, just, just round them right up. But the one that's on TV, they, they say, oh, man, I fed a thousand people this summer, and, 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 and I'm going to run for, for, for a mayor, and, and I'm going to bring souls to Christ, and, and all that. that they're lying. It's, listen, there's only one way to bring souls to Jesus, and that's living your life. When I mean by your life, you know once you was baptized, right? Uh-huh. Your, your old self was done away with. You, that old you, the old Isaac died. Uh-huh. And the new Isaac was born again. That's right. And I clothed myself with Christ. Amen? Yes, sir. And you did the same thing when you went down into that water. You clothed yourself with Christ so your image don't look like you. That's right. Come on. They supposed to see Jesus. Amen? Yes, sir. How they going to know Jesus if we don't tell them? Tell them again, Kelly. How they going to know Jesus if we don't tell them? Your co-worker, the lady you see at the grocery store, Mm -hmm. your neighbor, your family members. You love your family, right? You want to save your family, right? Tell them about Jesus. And and it's a sister in the back somewhere. I don't don't know who was talking. Which one got family coming over? You you go, sister. Because you know why you go? Because you in the Lord's house this morning. Amen. You know people, they I got company coming over. I got to prepare dinner. I got to do this. I got, I'm going to miss service today because that, that's more important. Now, the sister said, I see y'all when I get back. Amen. She said, I'm going to go worship God this morning. And you don't mean anything until I get back. Matter of fact, while you're there, prepare those onions and those green peppers so then it'll be ready. Amen. Yes, sir. A- a- amen. Tell them to prep everything for you so we can get dinner on the road after you go give God his glory and praise. Amen. After you get that way, lift up off your shoulder because I know it's been a hard week. You're dealing with your sister. You, I know God bless you. I'm going to be praying for you. You continue to, to do what you do because that's the Christian way. Amen. amen. Make sure your, your work is not in vain, sister. Keep working. Even though it, Satan ain't going to be there. He going to work. He going to work. He, you know what he do? He used the ones that love you the most. He, you missed that one. He used the one he lo- that love you most to get to you. He know your weak points. Your sister, your mother, your brother, your cousin, and yourself. Next thing you know, you cursing. You doing this. You storming. You doing all the things that Jesus didn't say he do. Guess what Jesus told Judas when Judas came to betray him? He said, go do what you got to do, friend. Go do what you got to do, friend. The same one that's ready to portray him. Jesus still kept that meek and lowly spirit. Even though he knew it was his time to, to be crucified, that could have been me. I'd have been straight street on him. You hear me, Kenneth? Oh, oh. It, it, had, to, it, it had to go down one last time. I'm sorry, God, forgive me. But, but, but Jesus, but that's me. I said, that's me. But when I became a Christian, I learned to have that Jesus spirit. A preacher always say, man, I love my preacher, man. I love you too, Kenneth. I love my preacher, right? My preacher say, right, he said, you would not like me if I didn't have the Holy Spirit. Uh, Amen? Amen? And that's what I was meaning there. Listen, if I, without the Holy Spirit, I'd have been all over Judas before he got to betray me. But, but God gave us that spirit where it's not us who live, but him who lives in me. Amen? Yes, the old me is crucified. I am crucified. And God said, I'm not the author of confusion. Come on, sir. My church is perfect. Yes, 
So in order to continue to abide in the words of Christ, our spirits have to change. We have to study the life of Jesus. Matthew chapter 5. Go read the first three verses at chapter 5 all the way to 7. If you're dealing with something, don't be, a, don't be ashamed to, to tell a brother or sister. Don't pass judgment. Because we all, we, we all deal with something. Hey, no sin greater than no, no, no sin greater than another. Sin is sin in God's eyes. God sees sinners and he sees non-sinners. He sees sinners and saints when he looked down on earth. So we ain't, we ain't, we can't say that because this sister do this, that I need to pat judgment on her. Help that sister. Help that brother. Help bear that, that load that he got on his back. That's what we put to do as the body of Christ. When people walk through that door, they should know, oh, these are Jesus' people. The way we act, the way we carry ourselves, it, it God. God don't want us to turn us his name that he gave us. He wanted to keep that name holy because he is holy. So when you leave here today and, and, you, and you were struggling with something before you came in, leave that with God. Amen? Amen. And pray on what you're, what you're dealing with. Pray on what you're dealing with. Don't, 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 don't die in sorrow. Paul said that. Don't die in sorrow. But come to repentance. Amen? Come to repentance. Because the repentance leads to what? Salvation. Amen? So God don't want you to go with that same attitude you came in. When you came in with all that, it's, it's Sunday. You had Monday through Saturday dealing with the world. And, 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 and then sometimes we, we, we get to act like the world a little bit throughout that week. But we can't. We can't. I got friends that's still into the streets of Chester, man. I pray for them every day. Because our crime rate is high. The murders is at an all-time high right now. And these boys are still out there toting guns and doing what they do. And people are like, how are you still friends with them? Then Jesus sit with sinners. They in need of a doctor. Amen? So what type of friend would I be not to try to lead them to Christ? Amen? So when, when we got friends that's like that, we can't act like them, but we can encourage them. And that's what I do with my friends. And, and, and I'm proud to call them friends because they're good dudes. But they feel like they're trapped in a life they can't get out. And I try to lead by example. I try to lead by example. So they come. I got this one friend. He hang out with me a little more than often now. He said, brother, he said, Isaac, I'm done with the streets. I said, hallelujah. Amen? Amen. He's been shot so many times. And it took to this point for him to say, I'm done. Yeah. But he did so much dirt, he can't just walk free. But I told him, if you come into Christ, the Lord is your shield. Mm -hmm. The Lord is his shield. I told him, Jesus is calling him. But, but by example, he asked me questions. How you live like that? How did you get out the game? I said, I just walked away. Dropped the mic. Walked away. Walked away. I didn't want this no more. It's only going to lead you two ways. And, 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 and for him to come and ask me that, it came because he seen my lifestyle. He seen the way I carry myself. Yes, I'm in people's houses that I never thought I'd be in teaching them the gospel. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm in neighborhoods that, it's 2018. Let's say about 2008, I wouldn't be in these neighborhoods. Ten years ago, I wouldn't dare step foot in these neighborhoods. But guess where I'm at today? In the same neighborhood that I used to run from. With a Bible in one hand and God's shield in the other. Amen? Amen. And I'm knocking on doors. On, and guess what they say to me? Wow, boy, you really changed, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 but I still got my eye on you because I know they hold grudges. Amen? Yes, I still got my eye on you, but I know the Lord will protect me. Amen? But I'm just telling you, when you when you sharing the gospel, yes, when you sharing the gospel, you got to get out that comfort zone that Kevin was talking about. Yes, you got to get out your standard. You got to go beyond what you expect. The God said, "Go forth, Joshua. Joshua, with be be courageous with it. Uh -huh. Don't fear. The Lord is with you. Amen. Yes, 
That's what God told Joshua. And that's the same attitude we need to have. We need to go forth. We got to get in that furnace mm -hmm. when it's hot. Yes, sir. Knock it on these doors. Bring the people to Christ. Mm -hmm. Bring the people to Christ. Mm -hmm. The most important thing that you have is what? Not your kids. Not your wife. Not your husband. The most important thing you have is your soul. Your soul is the most important thing that you have. And the world don't understand that. Your soul will one day go back to God. That's the only thing that's going to last forever. And it's only going to go to two places. It's either going to be with God or it's going to be in a lake of fire with Satan. So that's why I encourage y'all to be faithful. Stay, stay connected to the vine. Don't be perfect because you can't be. Just be faithful till death. And then you shall get the crown of life. So God, way did not, that was a Bible commercial. That was too long of a commercial, Kenneth. That was not part of the lesson, Kenneth. The people wanted to be like others. But what is God's warning for us when we try to be like others? Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. He said, therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies, mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship, and do not be conformed. You see that word conformed? Circle that and put wow next to it. Because we need to be reminded. Every time we go to Romans and you see that wow next to that and, and connect the line and see where it says, don't be conformed. He said, don't be conformed to this world. So he is telling his church, don't change with time. Don't change with the world. Stay the same. Don't be conformed to this world. But be transformed. So when we come into the body of Christ, we all got baggage. Uh -huh. We all got that trailer, whatever, sin follow behind us. But Jesus said, you got to be transformed when you become part of the body. It's not going to be easy. Right. Jesus said it ain't going to be easy. He said what? You got to deny yourself and take up your cross. It's not going to be easy to follow me. But he said you can't be transformed. You can't be cooked for. You got to be transformed. So you got to change your ways so people can understand who Jesus' people are. Amen? Amen. You got to look different to the world. Yes, and verse 3. Now it said don't be transformed. Verse 2. Don't be transformed. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove that the will of God is and that which is good and acceptable and perfect. God is acceptable and perfect. He said transform your mind. So that means I got to go to Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 through 4 that God please bless me to set my mind and my affection on the things above to where Christ is and not the things that is on this earth. Amen. Jesus said, Apostle Paul wrote Colossians, you need to set your affections on the things above. So when we set our affections on the things above, Jesus is my first priority. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. It's payday, right? Mm -hmm. Whew, the bill collector's calling. Yes, the electric company is calling. The, 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 the gas company is calling. Right. And you know, you know what? I'm going to pay all these bills and whatever I got left, I'm going to give to God. Uh-uh, 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 uh God said no. Set your mind on the things above. So that means when your bill, when your check comes, God, you know what? I'm going to take yours off the top. Yes, sir. Can I get an amen? God said, take mine off the top. Don't pretty pinch me. Be a cheerful giver, loving. Listen, I would take care of the gas man, the, the, the water bill. I would take care of all of them. Just set your things on the things above where Jesus is. Amen? So, Camden, I want you to set your minds on the things above if they're not. If you struggle with something, go to your minister. Go to your sister. Go to your brother in Christ. Either call brother Isaac. I, I, I talk to you. I ain't going to judge you. I'm going to be a listening ear. You know what else I'm going to give you? I'm going to give you a prayer. That's mm -hmm. all I got for you. But God needs to be first in our lives. Yes, we can't change with the world, with the time. 
People said 2018, man, the church got to change some things. People was not coming as they used to. Members is falling away because it's boring and things like that. That's okay, though, because God's way is the best way. Amen? He also gives us another warning, not just in Romans chapter 12, also in James chapter 4, verse 4. The warning is, he said, you adulteress, you do not know that friendship with the world is hostile towards God? Question mark. That's, you got your Bible open? James chapter 4, verse 4. God said, the world is hostile to him. The world don't love God. The world curse God. The world don't, 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 don't know God. They don't, they don't look to God. They curse his name. They live in sin with no regards of their salvation. God said, the world is hostile to me. This is what he's talking to Christians here. The world is hostile to me. It's hostile towards God. Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world, make himself an enemy of God. Being friends of the world, make you an enemy of God. That's like those friends that I got. I can't go clubbing with them. I can't go bar hopping with them. I can't sit on Brown Street all day with them. I can't hang in front of the store no more with them. If I'm doing that, I just became an enemy of God. Amen? I got to still be the light of the world. My light has to stay on. I still have to present Christ when I'm around my old ways, my old friends. I want them to know God. But I can't partake in their sinful life. Amen? Amen. So God had gave us warning when we want to be like the world. This is what's going to happen to you. Same thing that happened to Samuel and his sons. The nation of Israel. Oh, we want a king. God said, give it to them. They got a king. What happened to them? They, were, they, were, they was in captivity. They got, excuse me, that God had mercy on them. That they was in captivity. Then God had mercy on them. Then they was in captivity. They was repeating, repeating, repeating themselves. And that remind me of us, myself. When I, when I try to go on my own and do what I want to do, I fall. God had mercy on me. He blessed me again. I fall. God blessed me again. I get up. And, he, and it's over and over until I realize, oh, God, I need to follow your ways. Because I don't know my left from my right. Amen? It's not in man's ways to direct his self spiritually before God, but to follow God's ways in order to please him. The scriptures, when the world of God is, re when the word of God is replaced by some other authority, it's error. When we replace God's word with our position, with our titles, and things like that, and, for, and forsake the word of God, guess what God say? My word is golden. Amen. My word is complete. It's the scriptures that furnish us completely. Amen. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16 and 17. The scripture is completely furnished us. That means we don't need nothing else. We don't we we don't need nothing else. We don't need no 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 no, no discipline, no manual, no creeds, no nothing. We don't need them. We don't need no Book of Mormons because God said his scriptures furnished us completely. There's no more after that. We don't need no other revelations. When God's power has given all things, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, some claim, oh, you know what, I'm just feeling like this church ain't the place for me. My, their emotions become their judge. And then the person that's leading by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. People would say, oh, I, I got I to I fill the Holy Spirit when I come in. That's the first thing I got to do. That's how I know if the church is right for me. They don't even know. You don't get the Holy Spirit until you go down in there. Amen? Until you get down into that water, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that's a false, a false accusation right there. You don't get the Spirit until you get down into that water. But this is what the world said we got to teach in order to change with the world. Baptism. When compromise with dominationalism become more important than conviction of truth. 
when we compromise with dominationalism instead of being convicted by the word of God. What do I mean by that, compromising with dominationalism? When it, when, when, when it comes more important than being convicted by truth, when, 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 when you read the scriptures and it's telling you what you're doing is wrong, and, and, and they say, you know what, you got Jesus in your heart, it's all right. You're compromising the gospel instead, instead of taking that conviction that's going to help save your soul. Don't allow compromise to run the churches in camp. Amen? Don't. When Brother Kenneth preach, when he preached that word, and, and it make you feel a little itchy in your seat, and you want to run for the door, stay there. Take it. Because your soul is what is at jeopardy. Amen? Don't compromise what he's talking about. Be convicted by the truth. Fix it. That's why God said, my word will shall not come back void. He wants you to fix your problem. In order for you to fully have fellowship with God, God is telling you to fix your problem. Don't run from it because you always want to have that problem. Compromise relative to the plan of salvation. You got people that say saved by grace alone will save you. That's compromise. No, it don't. The Bible don't teach that. It say saved by faith alone. No, the Bible don't teach that. Is baptism central to your salvation? Yes, it is. Amen? Amen. It's not that you're doing it for our expression. You are doing it because you're commanded by God. Amen? Amen? So the world teaches that we got to not really talk about baptism no more because it makes people feel uncomfortable. So you got churches that's not even saying baptism is relevant for salvation. Changing the Lord's church. Only because we got to fill these seats up. We got we to bring them on in, Kenneth. We got to bring them on in so we ain't going to preach about baptism. We're not going to preach about fornication. We're not going to preach about same-sex marriage. We're not going to preach about stealing and lying and all those things because people like might leave. Remind what Kenneth was saying earlier about the brother said we need to reach the, the rich people. If, he, if that person is not being true to God and they leave the day or tomorrow and, and, and want, want to walk away from God, don't chase them. Teach them. Teach them. Don't say we, we ain't going to preach about him having three or four wives because he put a couple of eyes in a basket. His offering is very gracious. It's things like that. It's not about the money, brothers and sisters. It's about serving God. Amen? It's about serving God. And if you got to chase a dollar, you shouldn't be in the pulpit. If you got to chase a dollar, you shouldn't be a preacher in the Lord's church. We soul chasing. We soul chasing, my brother. Compromise relative to worship. Adopt, adapting the standards to appeal what do the world wants. What do the people want? When your preacher got to ask that question, you need a new preacher. I love the preachers. I'm not down preachers today. But when, you, when, you, when your preacher is telling you something that, that's, that's compromising the gospel, you need to get them out of there. But when, when they talk about what do we need to do to please the people, that's the wrong motive. Amen? The question is what we need to do to please God. Compromise to worship relative, a mechanical instrument in worship is not a barrier to fellowship. Oh, only because they got music. It's okay. We can still fellowship with them. They're still the church of Christ. God said, I don't fellowship with that type. I didn't command uh, instruments. Fellowship based on unity and diversity. Basically, we agree to disagree. The heart of the matter is, with whom does God have fellowship with? That's the question. Who do God have fellowship with? His children. His children. Not the people that claim to be God's children. He said his children. So if somebody is changing the church that Jesus built, they're no longer in fellowship with Jesus. They're no longer in fellowship. And when you're no longer in fellowship with God, you have fell from grace. Amen? The heart of the matter is, what does God have fellowship? To walk in the light means to keep his commandments. Amen? 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. Being righteous. That's what God expects from us, to be righteous. Do what's right. Being righteous don't mean be perfect. What the world thinks. 
It means to do what's right in the sight of God. But doing God's will, 1 John chapter 3, verse 7 through 8. When the spiritual focus is replaced by material emphasis, the, the lesson from the early church, Acts chapter 6, verse 2. That's what we need to follow. Amen? The early church. The church have not changed, brothers and sisters. It's still the same. God expects you to remain the same. God don't want you to go change with the world and give up what he had came for. The physical needs are important of the people. We got to tend to the world, brothers and sisters. If you know somebody that's struggling with something and y'all can help, help. Don't turn your back on them. But don't burden yourself either, though. Hear me out. Don't, don't burden yourself. God expects us to be good stewards of the things that he blessed us with, right? If you got $20 and it's your last $20, somebody say, let me get that $20, it's okay to say no. Because that's your last. It's God bless you with. Don't give somebody your last $20, then you can't get to work because you gave it to somebody. Amen? God expects us to be good stewards. He said, Christian, y'all can say no. We can say no. Don't be afraid to say no. Because then when you put yourself in a jam, God looking at you like, where your stewardship, we got to be good with our time, Dom. Sister, I love you. Be good with that time, okay? We're going to be praying for you. God wants us to be good stewards. He don't want us to overburden ourselves. He wants us to give time to him and to the things that he wants us to do. And also to the other sister with her time. God going to bless you. Bless you with time. Manage it wisely. Amen? Amen. God bless us with a nice job. That don't mean I could splurge. He wants me, he want me to be good steward with the money that he gave me, right? And he also expect the trustees of the church to be good stewards. Amen? Amen? The trustees should be good stewards of God's money that y'all been blessed with. We should, sometimes we gotta we gotta pass by some things in the upcoming year, or we ain't gonna be able to afford that, and that's okay. We got to understand God expects to be good stewards and also to stay in fellowship. But the most important thing, what is the church job? It's the spiritual needs of the Camden City. Amen? The spiritual needs are the most important thing we, we need to do. It's worry about them spiritually. Sometimes you only lend a prayer. A prayer go a long way. A prayer go a long way. I heard a young sister in the back. Good to see you, sister. She, 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 she said... That prayer works. You need that prayer. Prayer, God, open up doors. And sometimes some people just want to have an ear to, to listen to them. Don't, don't be trying to give your opinion all the time. You sometimes just got to sit there and listen to them. They might be going on for hours and hours, but as a Christian, we got to sacrifice that time, right? We got to give time. A preacher once said, and I'm closing on this, a pre one preacher once said, uh, I owe the church three things as a minister. Truth, always truth. An honest life. An honest life. I don't want y'all to be ashamed to tell Kenneth that, that Kenneth is your preacher. Kenneth live a good life. He's an honest guy. He's good. He preached the truth. And don't be ashamed to say that's your preacher. Amen? And you know what does he owe y'all? He owe your time. He owe your time. Whenever you're in need, you should be able to call on your preacher. He should be able to give you that time and some advice spiritually. So that means work with him, not on him, right? Because yes. Yes, we is the body. Everybody got to work together. Yes, Everybody got a job to do. That time I was in Camden, a few, I've been in Camden a lot of times. I keep saying the last time. It was a couple times I was in Camden and I preached on my involvement. Amen? Amen. Everybody need to find their place and help the body grow. The body can't operate when nobody, everybody not working. The body going to be limp if, if one member ain't doing their job. The church is better at full strength. So, so every, whatever you think that is not big to God is big to God. Whatever you good at, don't be scared to say, hey, Kenneth, I'm good at this, man. I want to use my talent any way, any suggestion how I can use this for outreach. 
I can use this for outreach or the children class, whatever you feel as though you can find your place. Don't hide your talent. Don't hide your talent, brothers and sisters. My conclusion is we need to inform people of God. Amen? Amen. We the access door to God for the world. The world get to God through us, saints, the church. We need people with conviction. Amen? Amen. In order to be at full strength, the members got to be convicted of truth. If you're convicted of truth, your light will shine and you will not hide it. Your neighbor going to say on Sunday morning, I can't go to so-and-so house because I know she had worship. Amen? Amen? I can't go to her Wednesday at 6 because I know she had worship. Amen? At Bible study. Amen? Your neighbor should be able to knock on your door on Sunday morning. Whenever the saints gather, we should be there. Amen? Amen. If you're not giving God your all, let's change that today. Let's give God all of you. That's what he asked for. He gave you all of Jesus to die on that cross for the remission of your sins. Amen. Jesus died a brutal death. He was spit on. He was, he was whipped. They put a thorn on his head. Blood was coming down. They put a cloth on him. And then when the blood dried, they ripped it off of him. Think about that. You ever had a scab and you just pull it off? And it stings and stuff like that? That's what Jesus went through. But he had multiple deep wounds. And he said, Lord, if it's your will, not mine, that you remove this cup from me. He felt every pain in order for us to have salvation. He went through the embarrassment of being hung on a cross in order to break down that barrier that would separate you from God. He carried a cross that was heavy. And then he was hung on his own cross that he carried. If that ain't love, I don't know what else is. Jesus loves you. If you ain't been faithful to Jesus, today is the day to start being faithful. Because we don't know when Jesus is coming back. I pray he come back on a Sunday. Because <laughs> I, I know where I'm going to be at, Lord willing. Lord willing, I know where I'm going to be at. But for the ones that be skipping Sundays, you better hope he ain't coming on that day you skip worship. Amen? So let's, let's make it a habit to be here every Sunday morning for a Bible study, first of all. Because Bible study is encouraging. It's good for you. It's healthy. You know what Bible study do for you? It lifts your spirits up and gets you ready to praise God in worship service. Amen? Amen. I get riled up in Bible study. And then, you know, that take you right into worship service now. You're going to be singing. You're going to be praying. You're going to do all the things that God commanded us to do. Because you already felt good with Bible study. Amen? So let's make it a habit, brothers and sisters, to be on time for Bible study, to be on time for worship service. Brothers in the congregation here, let's, 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 let's put it all into leading this congregation. Amen? God expect us to be, to, 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 to be examples. If brothers late, remember say, well, I'm going to be late. So I'm so late, so I'm going to be late. That's not, that's not the way to do and when we're singing, y'all, y'all got some beautiful voices here at Camden too. When y'all sing, sing with joy in your heart. Sing praises to God. Because when I stop singing, I don't want nobody looking at me and they stop singing, right? So, so we got to stop being distractions too. Because they're going to be like, why he ain't singing? Now I'm saying, why you ain't singing? You know what I mean? So we got to stop being distractions. So uh, we need to be, we need people with courage. You got to have courage to follow Christ. You can't be ashamed to say that you're a Christian. Don't be ashamed. Somebody say, what church you go to? Say, yeah, the Church of Christ. Oh, that's that church up there with no instruments? Yup. Sure is. Why you ain't got instruments? Oh, let's talk about that. Huh, brother? Let's talk about that. So we got all these ways that we can serve God. All the things we could do to be a service to God. Let's find our place, brother and sister. Amen. 
if you're not a Christian here today and you want to come into that fold, if you want to get to know God, you want to get to know Jesus, if you're tired of running around and, and having that weight bared on you and, and, and that struggle of doing right, come, come, come to Jesus today. Jesus said, take my burden. It is light. Take my yoke. It is light. And it's easy to carry and give me yours. That's what he said. And then he said, him who want to hear, let him hear. Come. And have rest for your soul. Come drink freely of that water of life. So that's your invitation that Jesus has given us. And you could be a Christian here today. You heard the gospel. First you got to hear it. You got to believe it. Then you got to repent of your sins. You know what? Repent means to turn away and not look back. To turn away and not look back. And then you got to confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Once you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you shall be baptized for the remission of your sins. And we read, we read in Acts 2.38 that he who repents and is baptized and is baptized and is a conjunction you can't separate the two and is baptized shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit amen, amen. that's a reason to rejoice amen? amen he said you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit a gift is given to you freely right Jesus said you don't have to work for this gift you ain't got to work for the Holy Spirit. Just obey my voice. And you shall be added to the Lord's church. The church that don't need no change. There's no need to be confused on what church you want to go to or what you need to pick or where you want to fellowship at. Jesus only built one church. And if you're in the midst this morning, you're in the right place. Please stand as we sing the invitation song. All to Jesus. Jesus, I surrender.